Hi, hello. I'm not going to talk to you too long because, you know, I decided to watch 217 fucking movies, so it took me 35 minutes to review all of them. Um, but, yeah, I don't know why I decided to do this. It's my last year in college. I won't ever have free time like this to watch 217 movies in a year. Um, yeah, so that's kind of sad, but, you know, this was kind of torture to edit this video because I only have iMovie, and it's very limited, even though I love it a lot. So, yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. I'm begging you. This took an ungodly amount of hours to put together. I couldn't remember all the things, but I had to. Uh, yeah, thank you. Bye. See you. Actually, actually, one last thing. Um, I know I may have been harsh with some of these ratings, but I didn't change them because I want to be true to the person I was at that time. Obviously, if I gave something a two stars, it doesn't mean it's still a two stars, you know? I've thought and about these movies after I've watched them, and I was like, you know what? I was a little too rude. You know, it's actually a fucking five stars. But, um, you know, I just wanted to stay true to the person I was at the time, and that's why I didn't change them. But, yeah, I promise I'm not trying to be a hater on purpose. <laughs> or what? What if I was... Avatar The Way of the Water, the first movie I watched this year, and it just wasn't for me. The first part wasn't for me, so I don't even know why I went, but you know. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. This movie is a masterpiece, and I could not have asked for a better movie to start my year off with after Avatar. Goodwill Hunting. You know, if Ben Affleck is going to play a likable character for once, you know, you better believe I'm going to be there to see that. Requiem for a Dream. You know, this has one of the most disturbing scenes in cinema, like, um, ever. Like, if I don't know if you've ever watched it, but if you have, I, you might know what I'm talking about. I can't show you, but it's a scene where, like, people, you know, y yeah, I can't even describe it. Sorry. Bye. Just like heaven. Honestly, there's a Telugu movie called Endicante Premanta, which has like been one of my favorite movies for so long. And I never knew that it was a remake of this movie. But, you know, I'm not going to lie. I kind of, I think I kind of prefer the Telugu version because, you know, it just hits harder. Four good days. See, the acting was like up there. And the plot was, you know, kind of just, you know, One Direction, This Is Us. <laughs> Girl, this is movie of the decade. So, yeah. The Craigslist Killer. Um... Okay, I actually can't believe I had like an open final, like a take home final. And I, I, you know, I had like 24 hours. So I was literally watching this movie instead of like doing my final. And like, yeah, yeah, I graduated, but <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. It's really not, in my opinion, but okay. Ave Maria. I don't think I quite understood this short film. So you can watch it on Netflix. So and let me know what you think. Gengu by Katiawadi. I cannot lie, this movie turned me into a pretty big Ali Abad fan. Urva Sivo Raksha Sivo. No, thank you. No, thank you. No. Eye for an eye. Now, I'm Indian, so thanks to Gandhi, violence shouldn't be my thing, right? But, you know, if it's Sally Field that's behind this violence, I'm gonna have to be on the side of the violence. I'm sorry. Last stories. Okay, Kiara Advani, I see you eating up this story. This is probably one of her best roles, not even gonna lie. Pihu. Who directed this child? Because, wow. And more importantly, who is this child? Because, wow, this is like a three-year-old that is eating up, like, the industry. Dear Zindagi. You know, I think it's a bit overrated now because I, I, it just didn't do for me what it did for other people. But I can kind of see how it would have been great if I had watched it in 2016 when it came out. The Glass House. You know, this one actually had me on the edge of my seat. This is not bad at all. This is kind of good. Unfriended. You know, well, I can't really say that these high schoolers didn't deserve what they got. But, you know, you, you're you going to have to see for yourself. Malevolent. You know, this was kind of boring, not going to lie. But I had to watch it because, you know, Lauren Spew. 18 pages. You see, my family met Nikhil, the main actor of this movie, at a wedding. And they said he was super nice. So I don't want to be mean. But, like, I think he can do so much better than pick this low-key lazy plot to act. Wolf Creek and Wolf Creek 2. Now this, this is what's up. This is how you do horror. Red Dragon. Wow. This was so good. Like, Ralph Fiennes? That man can act. Gothica. You know, I can excuse a plot that has no logic sometimes. This is unfortunately not one of those times. Girl in the picture. You know, I'm having a little bit of trouble remembering the details of the case in this kind of, like, short series because I literally watched it, like, last year. But this is a wild ride. Like, it's just plot twist after plot twist. But this is real life. Like, this is a real story. So, like, you guys need to watch this. It's on Netflix. Dumpling. You know, I think it's funny how this is Luke Benward's second role in which he's named Bo, the Green Mile. Don't you get it? He's afraid of the dark. Don't put him in the fucking dark or I'll fucking come for you. Dirty Dancing. You know, this was cute. I liked it. My Neighbor Totoro. You know, I kept thinking the mom was going to die and I'm really glad she didn't because, you know, this is a perfect movie. The Last Letter from Your Lover. You know, I only watched this for Joe Alwyn and not going to lie, it was all right. But, you know, you know how they go. <laughs> 
You know how that ended up. <laughs> don't, don't. Um, it still hurts. Heart shot. You know, there's movies that are like incredibly random, and then there's heart shot. So, just letting you know. Sitara, Let Girls Dream. This is simply devastating, and it's the fact that this is real life for so many girls getting married underage is crazy. Looking for Ali Brandy. You know, we see a lot of American teenage girl coming of age movies, but I think it was nice to see an Australian teenage girl coming of age movie and kind of see how different even the school culture is, you know, in all these different countries around the world. Call Me Chihiro. You know, this was so unexpected and melancholic, but, you know, I enjoyed it. Major. Please watch this. This is about the Mumbai attacks in 2008. You need to watch this. F3. Fun and Frustration. This was just embarrassing, like, and that's it. I have nothing else to say about this movie. Ante Sundaraniki. This was a really enjoyable movie, and I'd recommend it for anyone who wants to watch a good Telugu movie. Purple Hearts. It was so bad that it was actually kind of funny and good. Population 436. I mean, it's like a Hallmark movie if it was horror, but, like, not as predictable. Dare I say, this movie walked so Midsommar could run. <laughs> Pop star, never stop, never stopping. I'm afraid that this movie wasn't my type of humor, but I can see how other people would like it. Angel Baby, it's tragic, it's disturbing, but it's raw and it's honest about mental illness and this sort of like slow descent into destruction. And it's probably one of the best Australian films like ever. Father of the Year. You know, to be honest, I kind of just needed to see Bridget Mendler on screen again. So I had to watch this for her. And then I was presently surprised by, you know, the older brother for, from Liv and Maddie, Joey Bragg. Bishma. This is just unrealistic and I have like nothing else to say about this movie. This guy just becomes a CEO. It's crazy. Kumari. This movie started off so strong. I love the aesthetics of like the Kerala, rural Kerala that, she, that the movie was set in. But it kind of had a weak like supernatural ending. And I guess it's kind of my fault. Because like I'm just not a fan of supernatural endings and stuff like that. But you know, it, it was good. Flavors of Youth. Despite low ratings on Letterboxd, I really, really enjoyed these stories. And I think they were different from each other. And like, I don't know, there was just something heartwarming about, you know, four different stories set in childhood and stuff like that. Amsterdam to Anatolia. You know, I'm not really sure if this should have been a six minute short film, considering it was like a loaded topic, but I'll let you watch it. It's on Netflix and decide for yourself. The Royal Bengal Tiger. So this is like a Bengali version of Fight Club, pretty much. And honestly, I kind of enjoyed it. It wasn't that bad. Probably not the best, but not that bad. The Teacher. This is a fucked up movie about, you know, a teacher being assaulted by her students. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it, it, yeah, it's fucked up. It's, it's crazy, but you know, give it a go. Dobie God. The gritty 2010 aesthetic of Mumbai is to die for in this film. And like the stories are actually also so meaningful about the same people living in this locale. And it's like, it's good. You guys need to watch this. Southpaw. Wow. Jake Gyllenhaal went crazy on this performance. And that's me saying that as a Taylor Swift fan. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm serious. Life in a Metro. I feel like the whole point of the movie is just to say that everybody knows everybody, which is fair enough. People do know each other. <laughs> the Three Deaths of Maricela Escobedo. This is one of the most harrowing documentaries I've ever seen. Like this documentary will stick with you like for a long time. And if I were to ever suggest one documentary only to anyone ever, it would be this one. Scream 6. So this was actually my first movie from the Scream franchise and I thought it was pretty good and I'm excited to watch the rest. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So it builds up to pretty much nothing, in my opinion. I don't know. I just didn't see the point of the ending and like how the movie just ended. And dare I say, you know, this movie couldn't do what Girl Interrupted ended up do ended up doing. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. But, you know, yeah. Arm to the teeth. You guys need to watch this documentary now. 27 Steps of May. This movie was heartbreakingly beautiful. You know, the dad in this movie is like one of the best dads I've seen in any movie ever. Like he is... The best. That's it. That's all I can say. The delinquents. So this is basically just underage kids getting married in 1950s Australia. So, you know, what could go wrong? Elena. See, I don't think I understood this documentary and I gave it a bad rating at the time that I watched this. And I really, really hate rewatching re movies or like documentaries for some reason. But I think I'm going to rewatch this one because I really want to try to understand it better and see if I feel differently about it another time. The Meyerowitz Stories, New and Selected. This movie is so funny. It's so genius. I actually laughed out loud and I rarely ever do that. Get Smart With Money. So this is a documentary and I still haven't in implemented um, any of the tips and tricks that are like, given out in the documentary, but you know, it was all right. I might try it out someday. The Hatchet Wielding Hitchhiker. See, I'm not sure how I feel about this because it's a true story documentary. And of course, what the main subject ends up doing in the documentary and in real life, which is real life, is wrong. But it's crazy to see him portrayed in a negative light by everyone in the documentary just because, 
you know, he was a social media phenomenon and these people wanted to like capitalize off him and they couldn't do that because he was literally mentally ill and no one saw that. And I think, you know, it's it's kind of a, you know, ethical issue going on here. Yemaya Chesabe. See, I'm not sure if this was like a mental health thing or like just like the girl not knowing what the fuck she wants in a relationship. Honestly, it could be both monster so this was my first ever anime and i really really enjoyed my experience watching it um so it has like the most gripping like first 30 episodes and then it kind of starts to drag a little bit and basically in total it was like 74 episodes and i think it could have benefited from wrapping it up in like 60 to 65 episodes but like still this was probably the best anime i could have ever picked to be my first anime to watch because i know i'm going to compare this to every other anime i watch from here onwards so yeah it's going to be high standards <laughs> The Client. Oh yeah, this one's good. This one's good. Y'all need to watch this. The Great Gatsby. You know, I can't believe it took me so long to watch this movie. It was truly incredible. Like the cinematography and the set design and the costumes are like an absolute feast for your eyes. And truly, I felt like I was at one of his parties while watching this movie. It was shot so well. And the story is just so poignant, but like, you know, so beautiful. I never thought I'd use the word poignant, but here we are. Fitor. See, the potential was crazy with this film, but like the execution just wasn't, you know? The aesthetics, however, go crazy. Brene Brown, The Call to Courage. You know, this is a feel-good special that's worth a watch because Brene Brown is probably like one of the coolest people ever. The Intern. Is it bad that I thought there would be some sort of romantic plot line between Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway? And I'm glad it didn't happen, but you know, it was still a thought I had, which is scary. Julie and Julia. This was honestly such a unique movie. And you know, the ending, it does, it's not quite the typical ending. And I feel like it makes you really think, you know, what's it really like if you ever get to meet or talk to your idols? The Black Phone. Yo, this might be up there on one of the best horror movies ever. Because I love when horror movies just make sense, even if they have some sort of supernatural element to it. And this one doesn't have too much, but like the stuff that it does have, it just fits. Like it just works. It just makes sense. Mao's Last Dancer. This is a heartbreakingly good movie. You really need to watch this. It's about a child being taken from China and he's trained to be a dancer in Australia. It's just such a good story. You guys need to watch it. Watcher. I think this was the first movie set in Romania that I've ever seen. Isn't it crazy how we can go all our lives without seeing a movie set in some sort of country like that we haven't ever been to? And like, you know, I love a good apartment stalker horror movie. So this was decent. I actually enjoyed it. The Pope's Exorcist. You know, this, when I watched this, I was like, this is not the best use of my time. And my time does not mean a lot to me because I'm not that busy of a person. But, you know, <laughs> that's saying something. Re slash member. See, this was not half bad. Like, it had me on the edge of my seat rooting for these high schoolers. And it managed to hold my attention pretty well because they're running away from this monster trying to fight it. It's honestly pretty good. Sully. So I did kind of, you know, end up falling asleep during it because I was tired, not because the movie was bad. But I know this was a good movie, so I gave it a three stars from what I saw. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Now, now, guys, please, please calm down and bear with me now. But this movie was not my cup of tea. And I'm not trying to be problematic. I'm not trying to hate on it because everybody likes it. I, 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 you know, it just wasn't my cup of tea is what I'm saying. Hunger. See, I quite enjoyed this movie a lot. You know, I thought it was a fresh take on a cutthroat kitchen competition movie. And it's, you know, it's a breath of fresh air. Give it a go. Love, actually. Okay, I watched this movie for Kara Knightley and I realized that it needs a lot more Kara Knightley because she was barely in it. Dating Amber. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, maybe I'm biased because I am so obsessed with Ireland, like the country. But yeah, this one hits you right there, like in the heart, in the heart. It, it hits you. Think like a man. I'm good, actually. The Broken Hearts Gallery. You know what? This is a cute movie. This one's cute. Like, I just cannot lie as much as I cannot stop staring at Dockery Montgomery. Jennifer's Body. The whole time I'm wondering, this is a high school girl, but where are her parents, bro? Like, where does she live? The menu. Look, I don't eat beef because I'm Hindu, but that cheeseburger looked incredible. Paper Towns. You know what? I gave it four stars because I also wish I was a quirky teenager back in 2015 when it wasn't cool yet. And that's when it came out when I was in middle school. And, you know, Cara Delevingne is all I ever wanted to be. 500 Days of Summer. Huh. It's not a good feeling when you realize you were the Tom to someone else's summer. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> John Tucker Must Die. You know what? Don't come for me, but I actually don't think it's as iconic as I thought it would be. But hey, maybe I had to be there, but I actually couldn't be there because it came out in 2006 and I was four years old. The Hate You Give. So very few movies give me goosebumps, but this one did. Stargirl. So I gave this movie 3.5 stars simply because we read it in my sixth grade English class and the nostalgia was real. And also it has Karen Brar, so of course I'm going to give it 3.5 stars. Rye Lane. We need a lot more movies where London is also one of the main characters because why let New York City have all the fun all the time? Andalarakshasi. 
You know, call me if they make a better tragedy Telugu film than this one, because I'd have to see it to believe it. This one's great. And it's so sad. The Guilty. You know what? I'm trying to figure out if I would have liked this movie as much as I did if it didn't have Jake Gyllenhaal in it. Because like the English version has such low ratings and yeah, no one seems to like it, but I did. Baby Driver. See, I'm not too much of an action person, but this movie like grabs your attention from the minute it starts and doesn't let go until it ends. 127 hours. Always tell people where you're going. That's like the only thing I've learned from this movie. Just do it, guys. Make sure at least one person knows where you are at all times. I know it's annoying, but just tell them. Dinner is served. So this was like a short film on like Disney plus Hotstar. And like, I thought it was like probably one of the weirdest films I've ever seen. But you know, I suggest you watch it for yourself so you can decide for yourself. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. You can't see me, but you know, I have a thumbs up. Thumbs up. This was a good movie. The Fault in Our Stars. You know, I put this off for nearly a decade and I can't lie, the nostalgia did make me rate it slightly higher just like I did with Paper Towns. But you know, it wasn't that bad except for the fact that they, you know, kissed in the Anne Frank house. But yeah. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. The, yeah. Fresh. This doesn't do what Bones and All did, but you know, I, just, I still sat through it. World Famous Lover. Vijay Devrakonda. Why are you doing this to me? Why? Evil Dead Rise. You know, I actually went to go see this in the theater, but the night before I was like really sleepy for some reason. So I like fell asleep for 45 minutes and that was pretty much like a good huge chunk of the movie. So I don't really know what to say. Thalash. So correct me if I'm confused, but this man was pretty much ready to cheat on his wife. But the only reason he couldn't was because the girl he wanted to cheat on her with was a ghost. So she didn't let him. Whoa. Extremely wicked, shockingly evil and vile. See, this was a bit bland in my opinion, and dare I say, it didn't need to be made. Like, I know we talked about Dahmer earlier and the ethics of making films on these serial killers, and I suppose if we were to rule out one of the two, I'd say this one could go. Teenage Kicks. See, I did not know that, you know, I, I just had to stare at someone and they'd follow me into Sydney's Centennial Parklands to give me head, but I guess I'll keep that tip in my mind. <laughs> Next time I'm there, Sydney, Centennial Park, I'm coming for you, and whoever's there waiting to give me head... This is a literal scene in the movie, guys. I'm not kidding. Velvet Buzzsaw. I never thought I'd see Jake Gyllenhaal play a gay character. Wait, wait. Yes, I did. What the fuck? Broke back a mountain. Bro but you know what? This is an odd movie, but it's not bad. Like it's 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 absurd, but I liked it. Yeah, blue faces blowing up like violet. Carl. This is probably the funniest Indian slasher film you'll ever see. Because right in the first five minutes of the movie, like literally the opening titles, there's Shah Rukh Khan like doing a cunty dance. The Gift. See, I don't know. I feel a little bit weird about this movie. It's a bit unsettling. Happiness. So if you've ever spent time on YouTube at like 3 a.m., you've probably seen the thumbnail of this movie. It's like a famous, like a rat. Yeah. Um, you pro yeah. 1922. You know, I gotta be careful here, but dare I say... This was just the movie Pearl in a different font. And I kind of liked it because, you know, I saw it first. So maybe if I saw Pearl, I wouldn't have liked this as much. But I saw 1922 first. So, yeah. The Pianist. Oh, my God. Give me a minute, okay? The shot of him walking through the rubble. I, I, I can't. This movie is incredible and painful and deeply saddening. But it's so... You guys need to watch this. No One Killed Jessica. So this movie has lost a bit of its oomph, I think, because it kind of aged a bit. But like the corrupt Indian legal system from 2011 still hasn't lost its oomph in 2024. You know, shit just keeps going. The walk. Look, should this man have tried to walk across the Twin Towers? Absolutely not. But am I glad I got to see the movie because he did? <laughs> yeah. Three. So in 2012, I used to walk past these posters on the street in India. And I never got to see the movie because no one would ever let me. For, so for like 11 years, I genuinely had no idea that this movie shook shit up in terms of like the conversation around mental health, which, you know, no one seems to well, care about in India, at least not yet. But, you know, hashtag taboo. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop now. His House. This was an odd movie, but, you know, I liked it. Fida. This is a feel-good Telugu classic. It's just all around a like a heartwarming movie millie girl if you don't get out of that freezer right now where the crawdads sing you know i think she did it but i just can't prove it hope you like that 1408 see the ending pissed me off and i gave it a two and a half but my friend got mad at me because i told her i enjoyed the movie like everything about the movie un up until the ending so i had to bump it up to a three because she wouldn't talk to me unless i did so you know it was impressive for a 2007 film so it's pretty great give it a go it's on youtube broke back mountain while i cannot condone cheating i can condone watching anything that heath ledger and jake Gyllenhaal hall are in so 
Pendeja or Pendeja. I hope I'm saying it right. But this is a short film on YouTube and I, wrote, I literally have no thoughts on it. Like, like, okay, I guess. I don't know. You guys can watch it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And yeah, Caliber. See, I honestly don't have many complaints about this movie. You know, it's Scottish. It's a small town thriller and it just works. Free Solo. See, the main character, who is a real person, is absolutely insufferable. But everything else in the movie is very sufferable. Thumbs up. Creep and Creep 2. So these are actually terrifying because it's so absurd and so unpredictable. But like these are good horror movies, guys. I'm telling you. The Remains of the Day. This is probably one of my favorite Anthony Hopkins roles. And it's just so ordinary. But the movie has this melancholy vibe that just depresses you. But it's so good. You need to watch it. Persuasion. So this is a period drama version of The Office. I don't know. That's what it felt like to me. I honestly took it for face value and I thought it wasn't that bad at all, but a lot of people didn't like it. The Ritual. So, you know, it starts off strong and then veers into like supernatural elements, which I don't particularly enjoy as I talked about, but you know, it was all right. Oh, Kazal Kanmani. See, the entire rain scene where they go looking for the grandma was shot in an eerie way where I thought one of them was going to die, but then no one did. So I think that kind of sums up the point of this entire film, which is that there's no central problem or plot twist. It's just like a happy-go-lucky film. So if you're into that, watch this movie. The Fear Street movie is 1994, 1978, and 1666. You know, I actually really regret putting these movies off for like two years because they came out like during the pandemic when I had so much time to watch them. But like, you know, these were actually so good and I'm so glad I watched them. I don't even care what anyone thinks. I love them. Mrs. Chatterjee versus Norway. See, the real antagonist in this film, I don't think is really Norway. I think it's her husband. So maybe it should be retitled Mrs. Chatterjee versus Mr. Fucking Piece of Shit Chatterjee. Thanks, Heard and Seen. I don't even know what to really say about this movie except for the fact that, la that the last frame was like chef's kiss. It's so aesthetic. The Lost Daughter. See, no one can play a bitchy character better than Olivia Colman. The Reader. Now, this movie is the ultimate representation of moral ambiguity. Like, y you might be left really conflicted on this character or like you might not. I don't know. Just watch it. See what you think. Let me know in the comments. Vanilla Sky. See, I don't usually enjoy the quote-unquote mindfuck movies, but I really, really love this movie. Jack Jack Attack. Perfection. In one word. Darna Zaruri here. Is it really Zaruri? <laughs> okay, I guess. The Revenant. Yo, there is a part of this movie where Leonardo DiCaprio opens up and literally sleeps inside of a horse's dead body, and no one talks about it. Like, I, I'm losing my mind. Why does no one talk about this scene? Don't peek. See, this is a pretty good horror short film on YouTube that you can watch right now. Ignore it. Another pretty good horror short film that you can watch on YouTube. Toscana. So this movie was way too long and I felt like the, 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 the weird, like the, in, the way that the characters interacted with each other was like the weirdest thing to me. Like I was like, this isn't bad acting, but also this is kind of not good acting. I don't know how to say it. The Incredibles. Not a single thing is wrong with this movie. Incredibles 2. Not a single thing is wrong with this movie too. Ninnikori. This movie should be in the Telugu Movies Hall of Fame. Like it is the one time I'm okay with the main character not ending up with the girl he wants. Like, <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's about life. The Game Changers. All right. Black Mirror, Joan is awful. You know, I came for Annie Murphy and I stayed for Salma Hayek. Like this got to be in the top five Black Mirror episodes for sure. The Strays. The ending of this movie will make you laugh out loud. Like, it's so ridiculous. Like, trust me, you, you, you need to go watch this. Tramps. You know what? I gotta admit something, y'all. I love when a coming-of-age movie involves people breaking into other people's houses. Because you know what? It just gives 90s and 2000s vibes and nostalgia. Which is a weird thing to say. But I just feel like movie characters today, they, you know, they just don't do it the same. They don't break into people's houses the way they used to in the 2000s. So, yeah, I enjoyed this. But don't do the stunts that the characters do in this movie, of course. Also, Callum Turner is really hot. Lust Stories 2. You know, I wish Kiara Advani's Lust Story 1 plot was continued in this one but you know i guess we can't always get what we want but we did get Murnal Thakur. so did you hear about the morgans you know the things i will watch for hugh grant oh god dil bichara look sushant singh rajput this isn't on him okay he did an amazing job as he always did but this this was a lazy plot which really wasn't rewritten to fit an indian audience properly in my opinion two states <laughs> okay <laughs> Anand nothing to say besides you know it's a munchy coffee land to cinema um, I don't know why I did the accent that was so gross ew with my Telugu sorry y'all so basically to translate if you don't speak Telugu I just said this movie is like a nice hot coffee Paya 
This is the ultimate early 2010s South Indian highway nostalgia trip. <laughs> Ache villain. I don't watch anything for Siddharth Malhotra, right? And if the plot's good, that's just a bonus. And this was a pretty great movie, so that was a good bonus. RRR. The story didn't stray too far from typical Indian freedom fighter movies, but I think the cinematography and the grandeur of this film is something I can honestly really celebrate, because it was great. <laughs> Sama Devaragamana. Look, I like Sri Vishnu as an actor, but I just felt like this movie had too much of overacting from him. And I just, you know, I, I kind of, I watched this in the theater and I really wanted to leave. I'm sorry. Shridham. I think this is a really good character study film in Indian cinema. And like, I really enjoyed it. And it's, you know, it's a Malayalam film. It was really good. MS Dhoni, The Untold Story. So Shant Singh Rajput, you are perfection. Like he ate this role and left no crumbs. This was so good. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. You know, I went to watch this at the theaters for my dad's birthday. So I'm not, you know, I'm not like, I, I didn't go in there with like a lot of expectations. I just wanted my dad to have a good time. And I did have a good time. This was a good movie. Piggy. Okay, so this is a short film on YouTube. And you need to watch it and come back and tell me you don't have the same reaction as me. Because I'm shocked. I'm shocked at what happens in this like short 10 minute movie. Barbie. Double thumbs up. This was really good. <laughs> I don't need to talk much more about it. It's Barbie. The Godfather. Why does no one talk about the fact that everyone in this movie just mumbles the entire time? Like, with that sub subtitles, I would be, I would have been fucked with this movie. Calling, Red, white, and royal blue. You know what? The gays deserve this one. This was good. Sound of Freedom. You know, I went to go see these in the theaters because there were rumors that it was so scary that the movie theaters were like turning on the lights. And that didn't end up happening at my theater, at least. And, you know, but it still was a, r a really horrible and harrowing story because it takes you into the depths of child trafficking and shows you where these children are taking. And, it, you know, it's it, I don't think it was I don't think I was ready to see this, you know, on a Tuesday afternoon. It was, it's really sad. The Shining. Huh. You know, the maze scene is like severely underrated because everyone's always talking about him, you know, you know, plunging an axe through a door to kill his wife. Yeah. Rocket Band. I love this so much. I had to get like an Elton John shirt. I'll show you. I'm, I'm wearing it right now. <music> Muriel's Wedding. It's such an absurd movie that you're laughing, but then something major happens and you realize how fucking sad this movie actually is because everyone has fucked up priorities and like you know what just watch it it's really good american psycho okay don't come for me but i don't think it's worth the hype i mean finance bros please please just let me just i don't know i just didn't get it like i get it but I, 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 it's just not all that sita ramam nope nope i can't do this nope nope they deserved better period end of story thank you this is very surface level but for naga chaitanya honestly i'd watch anything cushy I'm not a Pavan Kalyan girl, but this one, oh yeah, yeah, this one hits different. Kapoor and Sons. Oh wow, everybody, get your plates out, cause this movie is gonna fucking serve you. <laughs> it's really good, y'all. Sadat Malhotra, perfection. Alia Bhatt's great in this. Everyone actually in this, it's really great. But I mean, you know, the dad is such a dick. I, 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 I'm sorry, but I wasn't really sad when he died. But it's like. It, it, I think maybe that was the point that everyone was sad, even though they didn't really, you know, they didn't really vibe with what he did. But, you know, I guess that's what family is about. Yeah. Is it though? Talk to me. This soundtrack had me hiding under the blanket, but simultaneously twerking under that blanket. <laughs> Rocky Arani ki Prem Kahani. Loads of fun and the energy in this movie is unmatched. Kalunk. All right, sorry, but the aesthetics are where it really shines and the costumes. Those are incredible. Ye dil hai mushkil. If I had been Anushka Sharma's character, I would not be putting up with Ranbir's bullshit in this movie, okay? His character fucking sucks, bro. Like, I mean, I get it, okay? I get it. But, like, you can't force yourself on a woman that doesn't love you. Identity. Oh, baby. This is the one. Y'all need to go watch this. This is the one. Magadira. You know, I feel like she should have kind of helped him a little bit. Because killing a hundred men, you know, that ain't easy. That seems like a lot, you know? I think there could have been some teamwork involved in this. I think I like this little life. Dilto Pagalhe. Songs? Fire. Outfits? Fire. Pooja and Nisha not ending up together? Not very fire. Two Hands. Best movie ever. Office Space. I only watched this movie for the main character guy who's in that popular cafe meme scene where like, you know, the girl talks like this and... Okay, room for Cray. Totally leave room for Cray. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like that? Because this is my voice? This is my voice. 
Rogan Josh. This is a genius short film on YouTube that you can watch right now. Pearl. You know, everyone talks about that scene with her on the stage, but no one ever talks about the scene with the scarecrow. Like, wow, wow, girl is violating that scarecrow. Ellie and Abby and Ellie's dead aunt. Cute movie. Totally killer. This was probably one of my favorite slasher films this year, and I totally wanted to les out. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's just like a dialogue from the movie um, that, you know. Olivia Holt, who is, um, what is that girl from Sabrina and Teenage Girls? A witch, and a witch, 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 like her name. What's her name? I know her name. Kiernan Shipka. Yeah, so Olivia Holt plays she, Kiernan Shipka's uh, mom, and she thinks... But, like, she, Karen Shipka goes back into the, like, the past to save her mom, Olivia Holt. And Olivia Holt's like, why are you trying to les out with me? I thought it was just what you asked for. What is the big deal? Did you just want to les out this weekend? It's gross. Not, you're, you're- The Banshees of Inisherin. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now this, wow. I might be moving to Ireland because this was great. This ends on such a sad note. And you're probably like, wh- why? But, like, why not, you know? I just, I love the vibes. Wedding season. We as brown people deserve cliche romance movies of our own. And this one works. Interview with the Vampire. I'm not gonna lie, this movie made absolutely no sense to me and it was like three hours long, but you know, I liked staring at Brad Pitt, so. Beckham. Islands in the stream, that is what we are. No one in between, how could we get wrong? I forgot the lyrics. The Swan. You better stand up to bullying. Don't be a bystander now. In Bruges. There is no film like this one, and nothing has made me want to go to Belgium more. It's the same duo from the Banshees of Inna Sharon, and it's from like 2008, I think, but it's so, so good. Wrong turn. You know what? This kind of slapped. I enjoyed this routine slasher. I, I, I don't even care. Believe me, the abduction of Lisa McQuay. Wow. It's an absolute shame that, you know, literal law enforcement won't listen to a teenage girl so or women as a whole. And it's it's just such a shame, you know, but you need to watch this because this girl is a genius and she saved her own life. Whisper of the Heart. I think this animated movie does what a regular movie never could do in terms of, you know, telling you, you know, it's OK to like not have life figured out. And it, like just because someone else does doesn't mean you have to. What a girl wants. Apparently just her rich dad to accept her, you know, quirkiness. Um, But like, isn't that what we all want? A history of violence. Oh, wow. Didn't know he could chill like that. Sorry, I mean, I mean, kill like that. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's, there's quite a bit of killing in this movie. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's called a history of violence. Yeah, friends with benefits. You know, it's a typical 2010s rom-com plot, I guess. So I'm not too mad about it, but you know, it's not anything new. Now I'm running on empty. Mulholland Drive. I just don't get it, okay? Like, what was that whole 2 a.m. excursion to, like, see an opera singer in the middle of nowhere? Like, bro, I just didn't get this movie, okay? So I don't know, man. I wish I did, but I didn't. Five Nights at Freddy's. You know, I went for Josh Hutcherson, but I ended up staying for Guinevere Beck in a uniform. (laughs) And Josh Hutcherson. Green Book. You know, it's kind of cheesy and plays it safe, so it's not extremely progressive, but I guess it gets about halfway there. You know, I don't know. Holding the man. Let the gays live, man. Just let the gays live. Last night in Soho. You know, I like the concept, but it was a little bit too predictable, but you know, I still enjoyed it. It was good, and Anya Taylor-Joy is always a great joy to see. <laughs> Thanksgiving. I need a bad bleep. Uh, Addison Ray. I need a bad bleep. Uh, Addison Ray. Lashadi the baddest, yeah, and she got her ways. So these lyrics are obviously very heartfelt to me because I am Addison Ray. Bones and all. You know, I kind of wish I saw that ending coming, not gonna lie, but I didn't. But like, you know, that just, you know, it just, <laughs> yeah. Val. This just goes to show you that, you know, anything can happen in life and things will take an unexpected turn literally whenever. So make sure you do what you love no matter what. No hard feelings. Mm, it was all right. Just a movie to put on when you don't want to have to think too much about anything. Bend it like Beckham. Wow. I thought this was a gay movie, but I guess not, which is disappointing. But the British accents do make up for most of the disappointment. Like not all of it, but you know, most of it. The Witch. See, it kind of made sense until like the end, but then it just kind of didn't. Because how the hell did Black Philip, who is a literal goat, end up as one of the main characters of the movie? The Love Witch. See, the message the movie tries to convey is kind of murky and doesn't quite stick, but the witch aesthetic is enough to make me watch it. 
funny and refreshing. And I think the whole Goa getaway plotline in Indian movies is a bit overdone by now, but because it's the director's real life story, that inspired me, so I'll allow it. Miss Stevens. I was so afraid that this teacher would give in and pursue something with like a literal 12-year-old Timothy Chalamet in high school because the movie came out in 2016 and you never know, but I'm glad she didn't. Super bad. The constant objectification of women is disturbing, but hey, I laughed, you know, like at least twice. So, I mean, uh, it was more than that, but you know, so if you need a casual watch, here you go. Suspiria. This is by far one of the best soundtracks in any movie ever. The Maid. You need to watch this. This movie truly contributes something new to the conversation about the class divide between the stereotypical rich family and, you know, the poor housekeeper. And it came out in 2009, which I think made it ahead of its time. Jaya, 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 hey. This is Malayalam cinema at its peak. Like, really? Y'all ate with this one. Leave the world behind. The slow burn sort of worked until one of the characters sits in the car at the end and kind of explains the entire slow burn away to another character, which is, I think, a kind of lazy way to end it. And it's kind of like you're calling the viewer dumb because you're literally explaining the plot of the movie to us, which I guess is all right for actual dumb viewers like me. But, um, you know, you don't have to be so obvious about it. Salar Part 1 Sees Fire, the last movie I watched this year. And per boss, look, I love you, but it's just not fun to watch you kill people for three hours straight, bro. If you did make it to this point, I am utterly shocked that you could stand my voice for that long. But thank you so much. I love you. Here's a kiss before you go. I didn't brush my teeth.